Advances in Laser and Light Therapies Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in. In this episode, we're joined by Dr. Michael Gold to discuss additional takeaways on laser and light therapy for acne. Dr. Gold, the Global Alliance Acne Treatment Algorithm did not include light and laser therapies on their recent acne consensus statement. With that said, how can you explain this absence, and do you think that there is enough evidence to recommend this addition to treatment guidelines? Um, so I think there's enough out there to suggest that they should be somewhere in the guidelines, and, and, and the way the guidelines are determined are with, um, first of all, they're with, most of the guidelines are with, are, are the, 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 the key opinion leaders who work on these guidelines are, for the most part, medical dermatologists versus those that use devices and do medical dermatologists, and that's not everybody, but that's most of them. And so they don't, it's not part of the thought process as are chemical peels are not part of it or, you know, some of the other, the, other, um, the other modalities that involve something other than medicine. So, and so then the second thing is, and, and what I agree with the guidelines, is the guidelines are based on large clinical trials that are double-blind, placebo-controlled, you know, some of the new medicines have 1,000 to 3,000 patients involved in these clinical trials. Um, so the, the guidelines are, are organized by, you know, those kind of trials. And then, again, retinoids do this, benzoyl peroxides do this, systemic therapy does this. All that is good, and they have the data to back them up, where if you look at the device studies, which I do a lot of, uh, they're small trials, and most of, most every one of them are not blinded, and most are not placebo controlled. Um, so, mm -hmm. so it's a different evidence of evidence base that is taken in, that has to be taken into account. So that's why they're not in the guidelines, but they should be at least in the comments. So anytime right. I pick up an acne thing and I read the guidelines and I read the print part of it after the chart. They, they'll, they never talk about some of the work that we've done on lasers and light sources um, and those kind of things. And it's a shame because, again, they, they, they're a primary part of how we practice medicine outside of academia, per se. And, and again, I think that's, uh, that's an important thing that we need to, uh, to keep in mind. How do laser and light therapies for acne challenge the current treatment status quo? How do they fit in with existing treatments? So, so I think that, again, in my practice, I have two different kinds of patients. Patient one has been on 14, 15 different medicines, and they come to me because they know we offer devices and other treatment modalities besides the standard, you know, I, the, whatever the pediatrician gave, the primary care gave, the five other dermatologists have given, we do something different, and that's that the patient that comes in and we start lasers, you know, that day and, and many people. The second group of people are those that come in and, you know, are, are pretty naive to knowing what lasers and light sources can do for acne. And so we, at the time of our visit, we, we will start them on medicines. And, again, and medicines take upwards of three months to take full effect. And so we we bring them back, or at least at the time of that visit, we start discussing the, what the roles lasers and light sources can have. And usually by the next visit, most people under, are you know that come to me are ready to have their laser treatments for their acne. Again, one of the things you have to keep in mind: there's a cost. Lasers, under no circumstances, are are considered insurancable, um, mm -hmm. you know, even, and, and people over the years have tried doing insurance billing for this. It's not acceptable. It's not, it's not how we practice medicine. It's not how we practice billing. This is a cash-based addition to what we do. And so, you know, that, that, that is also a, uh, something that has to be kept in mind 
Because if you, you know, you can't, if you come to a doctor and you want a prescription and there's a $50 copay and then you've got a, two prescriptions, so there's $100 worth of copays plus the doctor visit copay, um, and, and then, you know, you say, okay, we're going to do a laser and we're going to charge you $1,000 to do it. You know, it's not going to happen very much in most parts of the country. So again, it's cash. For acne, I keep, I try to keep the cost as reasonable as I can, and that works. For what patient profiles, in terms of severity or type of acne, are they more appropriate? So again, I, I you know, it's, it's, it, it, having been in practice for over 30 years, somebody might come into the office and have horrific acne, but that's not why mm-hmm. they're in the office. Okay, they don't care about it. Um, people come into the office with one pimple, and it's the worst acne they've ever heard about in their lives. So oh. again, I don't care. I, the patient profile to me is when it's bad enough that they need to come see me, that's bad enough. The people that I do this the most on are teenagers into young adults. So anywhere from 15 or 16 is probably the youngest that I treat, but I will go up, you know, I I, I treat people into their 30s, and once they get into that range, the, the late 20s, early 30s, it's majority of that is young adult female. So teenagers, all age groups, low 20s, all age groups, upper 20s and 30s, it sort of shifts more to the female population. What are some key devices for acne treatment? I think that you have to realize there are a lot of devices that can make acne better, okay? So, mm-hmm. and I'm going to tell you about a few of them. So the Short Pulse 1064 NDAG, I treat every other week. It's painless. It's contactless. And then, um, but when you take some of like the IPLs, um, which work really well for acne, if you have this, the 420 filters, they work once. I treat those patients once a month. And if you're using things like post eye laser, like the treat those patients once a month as well. But um, but most, and then there's a new another device which is a post dye without being the dye, so it's a it's a it's in that same range with another longer wavelength called the Advalite. Um and again that's a once every two week or four week treatment for my patients. So I use a lot of devices, um, but I try to sort of tailor the device to the kind of acne they have, um and, and the skin color and skin tone and all that other stuff. So we make it safe and effective. But I also tell clinicians all the time, you have to price this because you're not curing acne you're treating acne, and you know this is a this is a this is part of that treatment, and it's out of pocket, and it's mainly young, and you don't want to put them in a position that you know you turn them off to lasers because you know you you charge a ridiculous amount of money. Okay.